This video is to help you revise vegetative propagation, but remember it does not replace any textbook. Vegetative propagation is asexual reproduction in plants. This means that it involves only one parent and no gametes are involved, no sex cells, no cells capable of fusion. Vegetative propagation can happen naturally and also there are artificial methods. So let's begin with natural vegetative propagation and for this you must give an example of natural vegetative propagation in a stem, root, leaf and bud. So the first example is natural vegetative propagation with the stem and the strawberry plant is going to be our example. The strawberry plant can develop these runner shoots that branch from the main parent stem. These runner shoots will grow along the ground and eventually can give rise to daughter plants or new strawberry plants. As the daughter plant was produced as a result of mitosis, it is genetically identical to the parent plant. It is also diploid. Another example of natural vegetative propagation using the stem as your example is the stem tuber. The potato plant produces stem tubers. These are underground stems, the tips of which become swollen with food reserves. So basically stem tubers are swollen underground stems. The swollen food reserves at the end of these underground stem systems are the potatoes. When you leave potatoes for a few days, you'll notice that they start to develop these little growths known as eyes. In fact, these are the lateral buds giving rise to new shoots. So this is how these swollen tips of underground shoots, these potato tubers, can give rise to new potato plants. So the next example of natural vegetative propagation involves the leaf and it involves this plant particularly, the mother of thousands known as the calenco. Some plants like the calenco, otherwise referred to as the mother of thousands, can develop these little individual leaflets or plantlets along the edge of its leaf. They can drop off and then sprout into new plants. The last example of natural vegetative propagation involves the root and it's the development of these structures known as root tubers. Root tubers are these roots that have become swollen with food and associated with these swollen roots are lateral buds found at the base of the stem. Each of those swollen roots has the potential to become a new plant with shoots being formed by those lateral buds. And an example of a plant that produces root tubers is the dahlia. The last example of natural vegetative propagation using the bud is the onion bulb. The onion bulb is a modified bud. It contains a modified or reduced shoot system and a root system all underground. It consists of this reduced stem, these lateral buds and these swollen fleshy leaves that contain stored food. So if we examine the onion bulb, it's these lateral buds that have the potential to give rise to new onion plants. So now it's on to artificial methods of vegetative propagation. The four methods of artificial vegetative propagation which you must know are cuttings, layering, grafting and micropropagation. The first example is plant cuttings. So basically a cutting is taken off an established plant, the ends of which are dipped in rooting powder and this cutting is then planted. And this will grow into a new mature plant genetically identical to the parent. The next method is layering. So layering involves taking a branch that's still attached to a parent plant securing the branch so the part of it is below the soil and the tip is above the soil. The part that's buried in the soil is going to form the new root system and the exposed tip is going to form the new shoot system. The next method is grafting. This is when you have two plants, both of which have desirable features and you want to fuse those features together to produce either nice fruits or good flowers. It could be that you have one type of apple tree that produces delicious fruit, but not very many of them because the rooting system is so poor. But you also have another type of apple tree that produces lots of very sour fruit. It has an excellent rooting system and you want to merge the two. The plant that has the excellent or desirable root system has a section cut out, ready to receive the other plant. So then you get the plant that has the desirable shoot system. It either has good flowers or good tasting fruit and you develop or cut away a section known as a scion. The scion is positioned into the stock and to ensure that the stock accepts the scion, you have to make sure that the vascular cambium, a particular type of tissue, is aligned well in both. When positioned, they are secured with tape or wire and they should grow normally. 
A really great grafting project, one that's very interesting to check out, is the Tree of 40 Fruits. It was a tree that was made by an art professor using grafting. He basically grafted 40 different stone fruits onto this root system and it's really interesting, so check it out. The final method of artificial vegetative propagation is micropropagation, which is tissue culturing. This method involves the removal of a small piece of tissue from the parent plant. It's then transferred to a sterile growth medium, and then it will grow into this mass of undifferentiated cells known as a callus. This callus is then going to be treated with different concentrations of growth regulators, and the reason for this is to stimulate the production or the growth of roots and then shoots. This should eventually lead to the production of many identical seedlings that can then be planted as normal. Vegetative propagation, both natural and artificial, is faster than sexual reproduction in plants. All plants that are produced are genetically identical to the parents, so they're genetic clones, which can be of benefit if they have particular traits that you find favourable. It's also a very reliable means of plant reproduction or production. Some disadvantages include the lack of genetic variation and also the lack of seeds. There's no seed bank. Good luck with all of that revision. Please make sure you're using your textbook, you're doing past papers and you're writing your own notes. The icons used in this video are all from the NAM project as credited above. I am a pro member but I still wish to credit the artists. Please note that this video and all the bugbear videos are not to replace any textbook nor are they meant to replace teacher guidance. They are not for monetary gain and they are not intended for commercial use.